BoxingVoice.com, live with trainer Barry Hunter, trainer of Lamont Peterson, scheduled for a fight May 18th, live in Atlantic City. Barry, the last time we spoke, Friday Night Fights, uh, Lamont Peterson put on an explosive performance versus Kendall Holt. But when I raised the question to you about fighting Lucas Matisse, you said it was more of Hearns Hagler, and we needed to sit on it, let it marinate, because that was the biggest fight that could be made at 140. Why the change of heart? As far as... Now we're getting the fight a lot sooner than what oh, yeah. we were led to believe. Listen, this is a fight Lamont always wanted. You know, he always maintained he wanted to fight the best. And right now, you know, my opinion, I think that um, Matisse poses a bigger threat than, you know, uh, the other 140s as it stand right now. No disrespect to none of them. I think all of them could fight. I think uh, the 140 weight class is one of the hottest weight classes in boxing right now. But he's definitely a dangerous opponent. And I, and I think him and Lamont are the two strongest at 140 right now. And uh, what, what better way to go out? I'd rather eliminate your strength right off the top. Get him out the way and then deal with everybody else. Now, what do you take out of the Zab Judah Lucas Matisse fight? Clearly, it's a fight that will be needed to be used in camp. And what, what, what do you see in that fight that Lamont Peterson can capitalize off? Well, of course, Zab, that's my boy. Um, I thought he boxed beautifully early on in that fight. I didn't see the whole fight. I saw clips of it. But he worked off his jab real, real nice, you know, early on in that bout. And uh, that's one of the things that I would love for Lamont to do more of. Because Lamont, you know, a lot, and he can box just as good as any box out there. But he will go to war with you. And as of late, most of the fighters that we fought as of late are fighters that we had to go get. So that kind of changed our plan a little bit. But I think in this, this fight here, we're going to do a little bit of everything. We're going to switch it up a little bit this time. Now, Lamont has been putting on a rap of a bit of a banger. He's making it exciting. Uh, it definitely brings the fans. Atlantic City's not too far away from home. I'm expecting you guys to bring a good crowd. I, I mean, he's been down a few times with bigger punchers. And, in my opinion, I mean, Victor Ortiz has to be a bigger puncher than Lucas Matisse. He was able to get off the canvas twice, if not three times, even though one was not called a knockdown. But it, he was down three times, got up, and fought to a draw with a bigger man, with a man known to have a bigger punch. So while the fans may be thinking that the power is the, the factor in this fight, are you and Lamont not even putting any mind to the so-called machine at the 140-pound division? Like Lamont said, we don't believe in boogeymen. You know what I mean? Bottom line is you got to bring that behind and get one. So you better bet on that day we're going to be just as strong, just as big, just as mean as Lucas. And uh, I'm looking forward to a great, great fight. And like you said, it's going to be a real great fight for the boxing fans. I guess the question on everyone's mind is why a catch weight of 141? Well, I think, you know, if you look at uh, Richard uh, Schaefer explained it for the most part about the IBF not recognizing uh, uh, the uh, interim title, you know, so why bring yours to the table when there's nothing else being brought to the table? So, you know, I don't think that, you know, the whole thing should have been based on belts anyway, you know what I mean? Get the belts out of the way, get the politics out of the way, put the best fighters in there against each other, and then box and be back where it needs to be. Do you think that a win versus Lucas Matisse automatically catapults you to Danny Garcia? If he gets by Zab Judah Saturday night? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. You know, we would love to fight Danny because of the belt situation. You would love to unify the uh, title. We got to handle Matisse. Danny got to handle Zab, you know, and then and, 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 and if the boxing lords uh, 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 that control this thing would love to see it, I would definitely love to see it, you know. Be it Danny, any of the top 140s. Now, in Peterson's last fight, you expressed a lot of emotion. Practically jumped over all three ropes when he won. Um, was there anything that you think he didn't do well in that fight because he looked that good? I think, uh, you know, I, I heard a couple of the uh, commentators early on and they were saying that, you know, he looked off. It wasn't that he looked off. First of all, you have to respect the punch of power of Kendall Holt, number one. Number two, 
there are strategies involved in what we do, you know. So our whole strategy at that particular time was to get him in, in a relaxed mode where he would get kind of cocky and come forward, and he did that, and then we had him. And so it was more so based on strategy than anything early on in that fight. And then I, I believe it was the third round that we flipped the script, you know, and, and, and turned it up, and he wasn't able to answer that call. Um, but down the stretch, I thought he looked beautiful, especially for one that had been off as long as he had been. I mean, uh, the last time, again, you guys put on a really good event, and, and, and I'm not one to kiss ass. People know me already from all my videos, but I do want to say that uh, what we've seen in the Kendall Holt, Lamont Peterson fight was a great event in terms of the promotion. I mean, media workouts, you guys went above and beyond what a normal Friday Night Fights uh, event is and I do want to give you at least uh, commend you on it and give you an opportunity to speak on it because I know that your wife was also a part of that and it, it shouldn't go unmentioned because I mean from the banner to the post fight press conference to the media workouts you did it as if you were already signed to Golden Boy and what has to be said that at that time you were not signed with Golden Boy this was all out of pocket and uh, you packed the house you packed the house late because you didn't have a venue till late in the game Right. Well, hey, well, I, I appreciate that. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, Cologne, she, she does deserve a lot of uh, credit. I mean, she worked it behind all and uh, Andre Johnson also. And we only had like three, three, maybe three, three and a half weeks to promote this thing. You know, of course, we were in conjunction with Gary Shaw uh, for this fight. But, you know, I, I commend her. I take my hat off to her. This is her first promotion, TV fight, world championship fight. And she held her own. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking to, uh, uh, forward to much more from Headbangers Promotion, headed by Cologne Hunter. And uh, hopefully, you know, the fans and the crowd keep coming out and support their own. Now, uh, because of the con fight, having a hometown fight for Lamont has been a bit tough. This fight couldn't happen there, and they wanted to do it in AC to give neutral ground. But when could we expect to see him back in his hometown and get another event like that? I'm looking forward, you know, to the next fight for sure. You know, hopefully it's somewhere in D.C. Hopefully it's at the MCI Center, which is a great venue. Uh, the crowd is itching for it, you know, to be back in the city. You know, why not? It's the nation's capital. The first lady is in the physical fitness real heavy. And, and, and that's a plug, and I want to invite her and, and the president to come on out the next time we have a fight down in the city. But um, um, they didn't want to come to D.C., that's cool. So, you know, we'd have fight it at a fight anywhere, and we wanted to go ahead on and make sure we got Lucas in the ring. Again, I think he's a great little fighter. You know, I think Lamont is a great fighter. And if you put the two together, you're going to have a great fight for the fans. So we're looking forward to it. And Atlantic City is a hop, skip, and a jump away from there. It's like D.C. So, you know, we're looking forward to it. Well, actually, I know that you guys are, again, always thinking of the fans. So, again, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do it yourself and say, tell them about the package deal that you're offering, bus ride tickets and hotel stay. I believe that you guys are doing specifically to cater to Lamont Peterson's fans. Yeah, um, I don't have Andre's information, and I feel embarrassed about not having it right now. But, yeah, they are putting packages together uh, to um, come to AC. It's going to be a great time, great night for fighting. Uh, and also, we, you know, Devin Alexander's on the, on the card also. So it's going to be spectacular. Um, and maybe in a later date, you know, uh, if I can get this interview again, I'll have all the information that we need for these packages. And uh, we're we, we really, really looking forward to this fight. Now, I know you don't want to give away the game plan, but there has to be something in Lucas Matisse that you see that he does wrong or that you guys are going to be able to take advantage of you don't just get in there with the most feared fighter in your division at the drop of a dime. What is it? Ah. Uh, that's a secret. I'm going to hold that. I don't want them to turn around and change.